One of my favorite ways of creating is during live streams to my Facebook group, which you're very welcome to join. It's full of awesome Davin peeps. That's a term of endearment for people who dig what I'm doing. And it's a very spontaneous creative outlet for me personally. And this video has come from one of these live streams. I'm working in a vintage book, which is also part of the live streams. I live streamed this whole process and I've used my amazing Joyful Gesso to strengthen and prepare each of the pages. There's other things that I've done. I'm not going to go through all of those, but the beautiful surface of the Joyful Gesso allows me to use all sorts of art supplies on top of it. That's what makes it just a game changing paint, a game changing base in which to keep building your creativity on top of. I'm using my uh, incredible inks, which is a set of 12 inks. I've made my own markers with the ink brushes that are also part of my collection. You, the thing that makes incredible ink so incredible is that it is semi layerable it's a lit it sets a little bit more than just straight watercolor and you can use it in sprayers like i was just showing on the screen you can put it in um my found the incredible ink fountain pens and also in ink brush just all sorts of different art supplies uh, and i've also got beautiful labels that i've created uh, in my store so that you can label all of the little creations that you make with your incredible inks I've got some incredible, they're sort of like the mermaid markers really, and I can just keep refilling them, it's awesome. Particular things about the formulation of Incredible Ink that make it interesting, fabulous, versatile, on top of Joyful Gesso. They're one of those magic combinations. Another one is the magic one colored pencils with the Joyful Gesso, kiss, 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 chef's kiss. And the Incredible Ink is just she, 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 just, fabulous fabulous i'm using violet syrup if you've been around my world for quite a while you know i quite often start off a drawing for a face with this muted type of purples uh, whether it's in the jellyfish in the uh, mermaid markers or the violet syrup or any of the purples in the watercolors blah blah I find it a really good color to start things off with because it's halfway between warm and cool. It's born of warm reds and cool blues. So it's just a, I find it a perfect base color. And the reference image is that gorgeous girl on the right hand side of the page, right in the middle there, from a book called The Atlas of Beauty, which came out in 2013. I love having it there as a, a reference because it's got women from all around the world and it's just a gorgeous book. Now to look at what I'm actually creating on the page, I'm just blocking in the colors and I realized as I started to form the chin, that I had made the face a little bit narrow on one side. This is one of the magical properties of using water soluble media on the Joyful Gesso. Add a little bit of water and you can just dab the ink off. And you might be left with a little bit of ink staining the gesso but that just adds to the shading and contouring as you continue. So you can keep forming and reforming and shaping your lines, just using it like uh, a watercolor or a watercolor ink. And of course we can start dropping other colors into this and mixing them on the page, letting the colors mix together. It's one of the beautiful things about water soluble media. Uh, you can also, put just water, a little bit of water, just stroke that on with your brush and drop some of the ink into that. I've got other videos where I show that technique. And I'm just looking back to my beautiful reference image to this beautiful woman and just teasing out some little details. 
I love to draw from my imagination. That's my first love. Second love is to draw from life, especially in a life drawing class or when I'm traveling, drawing other people that are traveling or in a cafe, just situationals. And then third is drawing from a photograph because I find that sometimes you can get very locked into that perfectionism and when what you're creating isn't looking that much like the person, I try and remember to be gentle with myself because, you know, that's just my process and say, look, I'm just trying to capture an essence. There was something about the reference image that I really, really loved. And I'm just trying to just capture the essence of that. It doesn't have to look exactly as per the person. I just say that I'd stay loose and carefree and that my drawing process doesn't become... Oh, a judgmental session. That's just something I have to watch in myself. So sometimes I'll start off the image and drawing from an image that I find inspiring and I try and put it away at some point or close the book or turn the, the image over so that I can feel my way through the actual painting and respond. Because at the end of the day, that's a photograph and I'm creating something with colorful inks on a background with text coming through it so it's never going to look like the person it's not going to look like a photo I'm not trying to make a photo I'm trying to express myself and express uh, beauty <laughs> so I'm adding uh, the colors that I've used so far are violet syrup I think I used a touch of Berrylicious, a little bit of blueberry, and that uh, deeper blue is Hydrangea. So these are all incredible ink colors in the ink brushes. Now, while things are still very wet and they're gonna take a while to dry on the, on the gesso, and they're going to lighten off as things or inks or um, watercolors always do on top of um, acrylics they take a while to dry because they're not sinking in and they always lighten off it's a, a lovely uh, effect so even though they may look quite dark now that will lighten it's just something that you get used to and I've added that little bit of white ink in there knowing that it will bleed out and I'll get a milky opacity in those areas so I've popped that in the eyes to Build, start building a little highlight, a lighter version of the colors that are in there. By adding water to ink, you are lightening it in a way, but you're also spreading it out, you're creating a wash. By adding actual white ink into it, you are making it pastel, changing the color value, the tone rather. Ah, so now I'm adding in a, um, the, the much darker blue, which is that hydrangea popping a little bit of blueberry there, just changing the angle of the chin. And rather than referring to the image, I'm referring to what I've created on the page and creating that uh, so that it's beautiful for myself. This is one of the mermaid markers and the color that I've used on here is called, uh, what is it called? Conch. <laughs> It's from the Sunbleach set and I picked that peachy color uh, mainly because I just wanted to try and tie these two images that are on the page together and the other girls got those coralish colors. Now I want to add a little bit of detail and um, everything is still wet and drying but I didn't feel like stopping working. So I'm going to use some aqua pastels so that I can continue on with what I'm creating. Now aqua pastels are from my collection. They are watercolor in a stick so you can draw with your watercolors. The colors are named after some of my favorite master artists. And each of the labels has a little sketch that I've done to represent the inspiring artist. So we have Toulouse the Trek, this gorgeous lime green, this beautiful deep tealy green is Da Vinci, a beautiful deep cobalt blue for Starry Night for Van Gogh. Then we have Da Vinci in this really luscious purple with Adam's hand reaching out. Angre, one of my absolute favorite artists in this beautiful blushy pink. Botticelli, I'm gonna say my favorite artist 12 times, but <laughs> oh, 
the birth of Venus of course that is what is on this gorgeous ocean blue here is Frida in a vivid pinky red to match her lips we have a vivid dark red for Dali bright red for Cezanne for his apples yellow is Monet more the haystacks but I did the Japanese bridge on the crayon that is Marie Laurence in that beautiful beige and Gauguin beautiful paintings don't know if he was a very nice person he didn't seem that way and let's see how we use them now remember that the inks are still drying so I don't even need to wet the crayons you can use the crayons just like normal crayons no worries at all but like I said they are watercolor so they're going to activate as we go and they're going to add strength into these lines when everything dries they're going to stand out more than the ink itself so we're it's a mysterious process it's a an experimental process you are an artist in your own color laboratory carving out a, a path for yourself and because i've used non-realistic colors to paint uh, or draw out this particular subject I'll need to think about how am I going to make highlights it's going to be easy to make contrasting colors like deeper shading colors and contouring but to make highlights because the page is very very light but really she has dark skin dark features so I want to preserve that so I'm doing it's almost like I'm working in negative but not quite so um I'm having to experiment as I go and that is why I love art tools art supplies that can take me and, and stay with me during that experimental process and make me feel more experimental and the nice part of having a reference image is I can have a look at it again to try and capture the essence of nose of nostril of getting that thicker part that more fleshier part of the top of the nostril getting that little wrap of skin that just comes underneath and sure I remember and I've drawn many many faces so I know that when you're looking at a, an image at a reference it just bakes in all of these little differences and you just every face is different on every single person so it's just nice to look at that reference and then try and bring some of that into your artwork so I made several discoveries for myself as I was creating this and looking at the image I could see the model these little areas of pink under the eye now I'm not sure if it was from makeup or if it was her actual skin just the reflection because there's a lot of warm light bouncing around in that photograph but it was beautific it looked absolutely gorgeous it's not a color that I would think oh I'm going to add patches of pink under the eye and see what that looks like normally because that would make the eyes look maybe tired or sore but I think it really adds um, a nice little layer a nice little touch so I loved learning that and as a highlight in the eye her the, the face I want that text to come through uh, and I want to keep that light color but she has darker skin so I still have to build my highlights up somehow and say okay well, her eyes are you know that is the white of the eyes and that's going to be a different color than her skin so I added a little bit of Lauren Sand, which is that corally pinky beigey color as the white of the eye. And I, when I first put it in, I thought, Ooh, John does know that looks weird. But as this continues, I really think that it adds depth to the eye, especially when here, like I'm starting to add a little bit of highlight into the um, actual eye itself. Just it's a, a process that uh, is really interesting and having art supplies that not only can keep up with me <laughs> but lead me into new experimentation and lead me into trying new things for myself 
oh I just love this so I cannot wait for this to dry uh, to see how the color fades off I mean I love it and it looking strong here but I can add more color into that I loved putting that aqua pastel in and using the wet ink to activate the aqua pastel as I uh, went along I loved the coral that sort of hints at the more whimsical drawing next to her just kind of marries them together I'm using the same sort of colors so although they're very separate they're gonna it's an art journal and at some point they will talk to each other and I love this look at the Lauren Sun color this coral sort of color that I've put in the eye uh, I think that in this circumstance it kind of works especially on the eye that's further back where her face is a little bit turned but that's just what I think <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this edited version with some of these discoveries, things that you can try with your Jane Davenport art supplies for yourself. If you want to see the whole thing, you can see that in the Facebook group. You can find everything that I was showing you at janedavenport.com. I've got free workshops and videos galore. And I just, I love talking about art supplies. I love teaching you and inspiring you and hopefully getting you to create more art and love art journaling because I know what this does for me and I know it makes me a happier person so you know I just want everyone to get paint and drawing <laughs> bye